shouting out to the Facebook Live, Instagram audiences, all the folks that are out there worldwide. We're talking to black men about black men and black issues. And so we're going to go ahead and get it rocking with two individuals I've had a chance to know for a number of years now. Uh, and they also happen to be my frat brothers. Shout out to the Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. All right. So we're going to bring first up the newly elected representative for the 46th district in Orlando, Florida. None other than Representative-elect Travers McGurdy. Come on up, Travers, man. You know what I'm saying. Let Round of applause for the man Travers McGurdy, man. You know. Like, one thing that we have to do as black men is support one another, especially, especially in the world of politics. Because, and I can tell you from experience, there aren't nearly enough of us in that building on a given day, right? So we need to support each other. Next up is somebody who I had a chance to serve with. He was in the House representing Orlando. Now he's a Florida state senator. None other than State Senator Randolph Bracey. Come on up here, Randy. Yeah. All right. So if y'all are familiar with verses, you understand it's a music battle. These folks have chosen some songs that, uh, you know, they feel are appropriate for this occasion. I mean, for those of us from Miami, we know we up in G5, right? So it's going to be a little bit of a turn up, right? I mean, some are going to make you turn up. Some are going to make you think. Some are going to make you turn up and think. Shout out to Rosé. You dig what I'm saying? So we're going to go ahead and get started with these two gentlemen. But I'm going to be floating around because we're also going to drive the conversation around the song. So you're going to hear them give critiques. Uh, you know, raise issues related to the songs that they're going to be talking about, and we're going to have this conversation. So uh, get your thinking caps on, gentlemen. Enjoy the food. We got some drink. If, you know, the liquor helps uh, motivate your, and, and stimulate the, uh, the brain uh, energy, then go ahead and do it. If uh, the tryptophan within the uh, chicken wings helps get it done as well, we're going to get that going too. But we, we're going to make this a party. We're going to have this conversation and look forward to this music. Appreciate y'all. Everybody, thank y'all for being here. This is this is a big deal. This is something that's different. You know, we had a versus at a barbershop, but we wanted to, you know, get into, we wanted to go with men go, to be straight up. Right. <laughs> so this is what this is about. You know, the songs, I, I got turn up songs, to be honest, because I'm trying to win. But, uh, but it's all love, it's all fun. But the purpose is, we got to get out the vote. That's really what this is about. You know, the future of our country, I'm not going to philosophize too much, but I believe the future of our country, for our kids, for those we love. Like uh, Senator Bracey mentioned, we first did the verses in the barbershop. Now we are where we are. And um, we were just a few days, you know, for, for this uh, very important election. Um, and we need black men specifically, um, and most importantly in the state of Florida. We represent um, portions of Orange County and Orlando. I-4 is important, but we, we have to really focus on the areas where we uh, are predominant, and that's in Broward and Dade County. So, um, Senator Bracey, in 2008 and uh, 2012, black men overwhelmingly uh, turned down for President Obama to elect him. We need that same kind of energy right now with just a few days ago, you know, just a few days to go in this very important election. So, man, I'm just saying, like, simply, we, we if we did it then, we can do it now. So we need to back that thing up. Hey. Back it up to 08 and 2012 numbers, black men. Hey. They come out and vote. We got a black sister on the uh, ticket. Y'all supported Obama. Let's do it again, y'all. Let's do it again. All right, that was a good one. Fellas, again, I appreciate y'all being out here. I, I want to just have a good time. I don't get to Miami much, so it's, it's a pleasure to be down here with y'all. Thank y'all again for coming out. Look, 
the energy has been good. We in the final stages of this election. We got November 3rd will be the final day. People tired, but look, I don't need you to stop. Like we gotta work. Don't stop, work. Hey, hey, we at G5. Let's get live, y'all. Hey, come on. We're gonna get live tonight. We at the polls, but I need y'all to go to the polls. Ooh, I like that. Since y'all won't go to the polls, we had to come to the polls. I like that. Alright. I like that, Bruce. Hey. Senator Bracey reminded y'all the last day um, that we have is November the 3rd to elect individuals who act right. Because right now we got somebody in the White House that just act up. Real, give up, give up, fat a big Birkin bag, whole five, six figures. Right, so my, but we call it solid digger. Now the scam it, scam it, rich. Same group of things, they know it answer the picture. Drop a couple of rights, watch it get thicker. Tricking on looking, I'm looking at your nigga. If it's money, why he can eat it like a sticker? I ain't got time for you, fake. Talking all loud in them fake clothes. Oh, I'm the realest, realest, never sleep snake. Hey, he need to get snatched up. Hey. Tell Trump stop acting up. Act up, you could get snatched up. Dirty, dirty, yes, baby girl, you need to. Trump stop acting up, man. All right, look, so I said November 3rd is the day to, to uh, last day to vote. So look. You've had your choice to do mail-in ballots. Right now, we're getting to the end of early voting. But if you didn't do it with your mail-in ballot, you didn't go to an early voting location, you still got November 3rd on Tuesday. We're going up on a Tuesday. Hey, what you know about that? Unless your day is on Tuesday. I need some love for the city Hey, drop something in the comments. If you waiting till Tuesday to go to an election to vote. On a Tuesday, got your girl in the I think I was born on a Tuesday too, so okay. that's another reason to go out and nobody flipping. I might just wait till Tuesday. Use your voice. Don't wait. Them shows is back to back to bang now. Hey, I like that. I'm going to build on that. Hey, Tuesday, November 3rd, election day. Black man, it's simple. I'm looking for you. Where you at? We got to show up. We can't keep leaving it up to the black woman to get us over the finish line every time. Let's do our part. Right, 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 right. I like that DJ. Shout out to the DJ. DJ Ivory. DJ Ivory. <laughs> you heard him? Hey, you see Do that again. DJ Ivory. DJ Ivory. 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 Fire. All right. I want to tell you about this girl I used to mess with, right? One day, we was going to the polls, right? To go vote. And... She was riding with me, and she said she would never ever leave from beside me. So, but then she just dipped on me, and we didn't never vote. 
So I reached out to her friends, JT, Risha. I mean, the whole thing had me and my feelings about it. So if you out there, Kiki, holler at me. Meet me at the polls. Tuesday, we going out the boat. I want to see you. And bring all your friends. Kiki, do you love me? Are you riding? <laughs> Say you never ever leave from beside me. All of y'all, come on out. And I need I'll be out there. I'm down for you always, KB. Ryan with Biden. What you know about it? Say you never ever leave from beside me. Cause I want you. And I need you. And I'm down for you always. Ooh, bad. Then we kissing in a way. Kissing, kissing in a way. Kissing, kissing in a way. I need that black card in the cold to the safe. Cold to the safe. Cold, cold to the safe. safe. I'll show them how to network. Network. Netflix and chill. What's your net, net, network? I miss you, Kiki. Man, cool. Since we're telling personal stories, I'm sure I can grab one out of the bag for this one. Um, look, it's very important that, um, yes, we're here specifically trying to target and speak directly to uh, black men. Um, because it's very, they're, they're expecting us not to participate in this election and, and to stay home. So whatever it takes, you know, I mean, you don't want to do the souls to the polls, I get it. You know, you don't want to do the vote by mail. I get it. You know, but man, everybody got a boo. You know, so if you let it go vote, man, go with her. You know, go with, go with your shawty, you know? Even though I'm not your man, you're not my girl, I'ma call you my shawty. So I can't stand right, we can the shawty to vote. Make it a couple's night out. And we ain't did nothing that we ain't supposed to do. Couple's day mind. out. Shorty the vote. I like that. All right, look, everybody knows this pandemic has been rough on everybody, right? And uh, it's just hit us hard economically um, and just in so many ways, our movement. And so I really feel like we need good leadership to lead us out of this pandemic. True, true. So if you want to take this mask off for permanently, then you gotta choose wisely. Mask off. I want the mask off permanently. We socially distance, but I don't wanna do this forever. Who y'all choosing? Next is important. Man, this DJ fire right on cue. So I know we about to get into the verses, but you know, something just bothered me that I gotta just at least ask and we'll spend like, if someone's got to say something, but like, I really try to figure out, you know, we got two presidential candidates and I've talked to, or at least see people on social media that are attracted by Trump's message. And I don't know if anyone has something to say on that, because you can see at this point, black men, their vote is being recruited heavily. And so is there anything that you can say as to like what you want to see from either like the, any party? Is Trump's message um, appealing? Like, I mean, I want to have like a real conversation because, you know, I, I think that black men are, are crucial in this election. And I think that there are things that we want as men, you know, like good economic opportunities, but what have you. And so I just, I want to know, is there anything that, that you're looking for to be spoken about? Or is it being addressed or is it not? Any commentary? Yes, sir. We, we going off script for a quick sec. Uh, I came from a neighborhood where a lot of people sold weed and like to me like that's not a bad thing so i'd like to see um whoever becomes president uh free black men that are incarcerated for non-violent marijuana charges um i just moved from la and it's crazy walking into a store and the white man is getting millions and millions of dollars for the same thing that my brothers back home are like ducking the law for 
I love that. Matter of fact, me, my man right here, are gonna have a bill to address that because, and, and I really feel like we need to have reparations, to be honest. You talking about decades of black people going to prison for marijuana, and now, especially in Florida, you got licenses that they're only about 20, and you've got, and, and the barriers are so high to even get into the industry that only the wealthy and the white can get in it. So how do you incarcerate a whole group of people, a whole generation, and then empower and, and, and um, build up economically a whole, another group of people? So I appreciate you saying that. Yes, sir. Um, I was recently uh, listening to a conversation about um, federal funding and just loans in general only 3% goes to the black community. And you know, economics is a big thing. Like, we can't move forward if we don't have the capital. So how can, I, I want a president or I want a government that's going to make sure that a certain amount of money is secured for the black community. If we make up about 13% of the population, then at least 13% of any funding that's out there for small businesses or personal loans should be available to us. But we only account for about 3%. So. I'm looking for somebody who's going to cover that 10-point spread. Man, it's funny that you say that because I was listening to, to a podcast, and they were saying how black men, especially black men in the construction industry, how they're leaning more toward uh, being conservative because of you know, you know, their finances and, and the, the, the things that Trump said. So, but to your point, it's, it's really up to, it really all boils, boils down back to voting. And that's on the local, state, and federal level. Yeah, we want to close that gap. Senator Bracey, now we have conversations locally at home with our airport officials, you know, trying to make sure that um, African-American um, business owners get their fair share of contracts when you talk about, you know, countries at the airport, uh, being cons um, concierges, uh, you know, having their concessions. But we have to make sure that we have people that care about us that are in the elected positions all across the board because it takes, it, what the president does on the federal level, it takes a while to trickle down to you at home. But what they do in your city, at your city council meetings and in Tallahassee here in Florida, you know, in the, in the state capitol, that, that affects you, you know, e immediately. So it really, it really matters like who we elect across the board, is my opinion. Senator? Yeah. Brother Agnew. Yeah, I'm a, oh, my man. Well, real quick, um, and to that point, you talk about the weed industry, going back to your point, you know, myself, Representative McCurdy, are going to put forth bills to try to address that. But we have a governor in place that is good with the industry, the marijuana industry, to where it is. So we want to open it up for 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 minorities to get in it. So that's why it's more. That's why it's important that you not just vote for or think about the president. Like we, two years from now, we're going to have a governor's race. That's that's ex just as important, if not more. And so I just want to highlight that, and that's why it's important. I believe we talk about economic opportunities for us. We get it by putting forth our vote, and then the, the system pays attention to us. Mr. Agnew, thanks for being Before here. Before Brother Agnew. And we as black, we have, we have done our job enough to let people that look like us to have our interests at mind, but when it comes to, uh, you know, to the governor's race in two years, we still got work to do. You know, so they're still, and that's why they try to make it so hard for us. When we see the Amendment 4 and what they do with Amendment 4 with returning citizens, they know we're so close. We understand as elected officials everything that is on your heart, everything that we desire, everything that we want to see. And we're just in the minority. You know, we've been in the, in the minority for such a long time, but we're right there on the cusp to have a governor that represents us. And that's why they want to make it so difficult to uh, suppress our votes and to discourage us from voting, but we're right there. We lose statewide races by less than 1% in the state of Florida. With the returning citizens that come from Amendment 4, we, can, we, we should never lose any statewide races in the state of Florida ever again. Brother Agnew. No, you said it spot on. Um, I, I wanna say, one, I'm excited, and I think to acknowledge the fact that we here, being able to communicate about politics, economics, is an important thing, and they say this doesn't exist. I'm glad we got a number of cameras here um, on this Sunday. I was glad when they said under me, come to G5 on this Sunday. You know, this is a beautiful thing. 
I do want to say, I want to acknowledge two things, and I'll do, do both very quickly. One is that anything that Trump says, any opportunity that the Republicans take to recruit black men, um, we must start with the fact that it is because the Democrats have been woefully insufficient in meeting our needs. And so any, any, any slither of votes that he's able to recruit is because the Democrats have uh, been delinquent in their duties, right? And so for me, the, the conversation isn't whether our votes mean something. It is what is the powerful organization that we are going to build to make our votes mean something. It is what are we going to do and how are we going to be aligned in between the elections, right, to make people very afraid to disappoint us, right? And that is, the, that is about building organization. And so I, I took the mic and, um, you know, generally I would take the seat back seat, but I'm working with an organization called Black Men Build, and the entire goal is to get black men aligned to engage with this country on a political level, not just electorally, but politically. Every decision that we make is a political decision. And so for me, my song earlier, it wasn't hot, so I ain't say it, but my song is What's Love Got to Do With It? I do not love Biden. I do not love Kamala Harris. I'm an alpha she AKA. I don't got no love for her politics, right? But I'm choosing an opponent, not a champion. And so for the next four years, we need to make a decision about who presents a favorable terrain for us to organize on. And in my opinion, both of them politically have declared war on black people. And so we have a duty to return it in kind. So for the next four to eight years, if we're organized and we build a powerful organization, we can make mayors, council people, governors, senators, representatives afraid to disappoint us. And so that's what the conversation that I want to have um, in the future. I think I did go. I held my nose and on Monday, the first day of voting, I circled that for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I didn't love doing it. I'm embarrassed that I had to do it. But what we've got to do in the future is make sure we don't have to choose between two. two there's no lesser evil. There is just evil. And so we got to build an organization. So I would love to talk to brothers about Black Men Build. And I've got materials, very shameful plug, but I would love to talk to y'all. Thank you. <laughs> got to shoot your shot wherever, wherever we are. Hey, I appreciate it, man. I'm loving this. We in G5 having this kind of conversation. This is, to me, this is what this is about. You know what I mean? Because we have been left out of the conversation for so long. And we have, a, we have the opportunity to make our impact. Make our voices heard. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Um, I think the type of change I would like to see is everyone keeps saying defund the police. I think we take some of that money, and I'd like to see it um, reallocated and put in another position where we teach the police officers that don't look like us. We put, um, have them train, so when they go into the minority neighborhoods, that they know how to respond and know how to react to people like us. Or even just have more police officers that look like us in our neighborhoods. And we don't have that. So that's why we have all these police shootings, police killings, with all these other officers that don't look like us. So instead of defunding the police, you know, take some of that money and put it towards training police officers correctly. Hey. We coming back. We gonna yeah. get a couple more songs in. I thought about these songs. I'm gonna have to get these songs off. Yeah, so. man, I ain't drive this far though. Um, I'm gonna play my songs, brother. Hey. We coming listen, back. Listen, bro. listen. We starting listen. with my man right here when and, we get back. And it's my turn right now too, so I, hey, everyone, Y'all absolutely right. And that's exactly what we need to be talking about. I'm not going to talk. I'm going to bring my song again. All I'm going to say, hey, if, if Brother Adnew had to hold his nose, but he still voted for Joe Biden, damn it, it better not be now in my phone that don't vote. So not now one of y'all better not be talking about you staying home, you're not voting, you're not participating. Please go vote. Hold your nose if you got to. <laughs> and since I'm in the 305, I thought I'd pay homage to <laughs> Better not see now. Not now one, one of y'all. And hey, we got access. We can see who voted. All right. You done ate our chicken. You better vote. <laughs> And I lick it too. All right. 
Anyway, so I was watching the debate the other night, right? And Biden talks about like he's from Scranton, Delaware, a rough and tumble, you know, hard nosed neighborhood or whatever. And then you got Trump, who's like a billionaire, silver spoon in his mouth. So it's like, you know, I was thinking, if you look at where they where they come from, you would think Biden was bad and Trump would be bougie. Hey! Raindrops, drop top, drop top, smoking no But it's actually the, the other way around. No, your bitch, yeah, that, that, that. Cooking up from the crock pot. We got bad news. Hey. I don't try nobody to grit the trick. Nobody call up the gang and they come Biden and get a little more sophisticated. But look, it's up to you, though. Bad and bullshit, it's really up to you. I really, I care. My nigga's a savage, ruthless. But I'd rather you vote either way. Bad and bullshit, bad. Cooking up bad or booze. My nigga's a savage, ruthless. We got thudders and hunter rounds, too. Hey. Let that part play. Cool. Hey, November 3rd, 2020. November 4th, we can wake up. It could be a whole nother day. A new administration, new things to look forward to. But um, as long as we still have time to vote, we need to exercise that right. Whatever your plan is, whether that's to vote early, um, you know, uh, wait, if you're waiting until election day, just have a plan. But just know. As long as there's time, as long as there's time, we still in this. I'm in my zone, I'm feeling it. Stop blowing my buzz, quit killing it. So buy another round and try to shut us down. By the now we're up, go, but we still in this. We're still in this. We're still in this. We're still in this. We just turn this shit up loud and buy another round. We try to shut us down. By the now we're up, go, but we still a good one that's a good one all right listen one of the excuses i hear when i talk to people the day after the election is that they overslept and i'm like how you oversleep all day you got two weeks of early voting and you talking about you overslept on election day so this is what i need y'all to do get up out the B E D. I know you wanna love, but I just wanna hey. hey girl, you know the deal. You keep it real. I know you Hey, I know it's a stretch see. making these it's a stretch making see. these connections, but we doing it. We trying to reach the people. Get about the bed. But I just wanna hey girl, you know the deal. Bubble in your choice. Keep it real. I know you wanna Get about the bed. I like that. Hold that, everybody keep that energy. Keep it, keep it. He said with you to get up out the bed. Who are you in the bed with? Oh. Uh, it better not be with now with nobody who ain't voted, you know? I mean, or perhaps you in the bed with your lovers and friends who need to vote. <laughs> it's your baby, your boo, but are they registered? Take them to the polls. Everybody vote. That could be your uh, pillow talk. Right. What's your precinct, baby? <laughs> you know we had to What's do your it. precinct? We had to do it again, bro. <laughs> uh, don't do the singing of these ladies, man. Hey, early votes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's my falsetto, you know. That boy used to kill it in the, in the church choir back in the I day. I was a strong tenor in the church choir, man. <laughs> Facebook, please. Hey, man, like if you like that falsetto. Please hey. inbox me for booking inquiries, please. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, like us, share this, right. and please, if you haven't voted, make a plan. Go today if it's still open. If not, tomorrow. Yo, so I just want to be real for a second. Um, I think we have an opportunity if we show the power of our collective votes to really make the politicians bend toward what we're asking for. So if we really want to see job opportunities, economic opportunities, business opportunities, we talked about the weed industry. If we really want to do that, then we, we, we got to vote. 
and they will start to pay attention to us. And so basically we do that and we can run this town. Not them, us. That's how I see it. I'm ready. That's what it's about. Who's gonna learn this country next year for the next four years? That's the question. We should run the marijuana industry, in my opinion, legally. So, we're, we're almost done, right? Listen, um, nobody's gonna do the work for us. We, it's up to us to be the change that we wanna see. I know we hear that and it's so cliche, so I'll try to say it another way maybe in a way that y'all understand it in 2020. I mean, we have to wake up, get involved, get energized, and just tap into what's in the inside of us and take care of it. We gotta tap, tap, Low, bass, bass, tap bass, in. Baby, tap in. <laughs> tap, tap, tap in. Diamonds dancing on your neck, better tap in. Tap, tap, tap in. Getting money, get rich, baby, tap in. Tap, tap, tap in. This for the ladies. I need y'all to vote. Because really, the, the men, y'all do something. Y'all got influence over us. Y'all know how y'all got that influence. And I ain't going to really go there. But I need, so I need y'all to do y'all part. Because we going to follow. I mean, we the leaders. But y'all do it. We going to do it also. So I need the classy. The bougies, the ratchet ones, Preach. the sassy, the moody ones. Well, I'm that, yeah. Been that, still that, bah. will forever be that, forever be that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm the hood, Mona Lisa, breaking good in the pieces. Had to egg some cheesy niggas out my circle like a pizza. I'm way too exclusive, I don't shop on Insta boutiques. All them little clothes only fit fake booties. Bad, bad, real talking cash. Be like water, I'm a mother and relaxing. I would never trip on a n if I had him. That's my trash, you the maid, so you back him. I'm a savage. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Sassy, moody, nasty. Hey, hey. As a faculty member at Florida a and University, uh, one of the main issues I see is the criminalization of young black males. And we all know that that criminalization starts at a very young age. So uh, I need somebody in office that's going to address that. Uh, one thing that I see in my dissertation research is the school to prison pipeline. And if you grew up in the state of Florida, you know that that affects us to a very uh, large extent. So my question is, because we've heard things regarding uh, criminal justice, we've heard economics, we've heard politics, how uh, can we connect all of these situations and touch the youngins through education? That's a great question. Um, you know, I, I've been doing all I can on a state level to address our criminal justice system. I, I think it starts like with electing the right people in law enforcement. I think there needs to be a conversation around uh, how we fund law enforcement. You, someone mentioned defunding the police. I mean, I don't, I don't like that term but it, because it, it gets easily misconstrued. But what, the other, what they're trying to say is like, can we shift some resources into education, right? So that like we're doing a better job of preparing our kids for the future so they don't get involved with the law. So I think, but again, I think it all comes back to having the leaders in place that believe in this philosophy of like more money in education, maybe less 
uh, uh, criminalizing people. So, and right now, I feel like there's a fight between those two perspectives. You know what I mean? And, and so, right now, we need our people to get out there and push for those leaders that champion, you know, re real reform. Um, so, that, that's, but it, it's, it's so, it's so deep, um, this criminal justice, I mean, this uh, school to prison pipeline that it's gonna take a second, it's gonna take a while, you know, to, to turn the tide. Um, but, yes, sir. So uh, one of the things that I had the uh, privilege of doing is working with an organization that uh, works with um, court-involved youth. Um, I do it virtually with students and uh, young people out of New York City from the age of 15 to 19 years old. And they have to take these pre-trial diversion courses or it's just an alternative to being incarcerated. Also, when I, one thing I noticed, like when you go to the polls and you vote, I mean, a lot of times these judges have a lot of power, right? You know, a white kid could come in with a weed charge, and the, and the judge has a rubric of what they can do with that kid. They can give them, you know, community service, pretrial, but our kids always get the harshest crime, you know what I'm saying? And it comes to the judges. So one of the things, and right now, I was, I was going through the ballots, there's only one um, black justice right now in the state of Florida, you know what I'm saying? And so he's old. When he retired, we might go back to an all-white justice at a state level. So. Another thing that we need to do as a community over the next election cycle is find out how we can get more judges that look like us and how we can infiltrate the system so that when our kids show up, there's someone that could, could advocate for them. Because if you in the, if you ever been in the criminal justice system, you go in the courtroom, the judge is white, the bailiff is white, your public defender is white, and everybody else is black. And, and so we need judges. Judges are, are a part of the the government that is overlooked, that people don't really look into, but I think as black people, those are the people that's really uh, influencing our future the most. Just to jump on that, I think a little bit more uh, information need to be given to the publics about voting locally, because a lot of people are gonna go to the back and just the damn. They're not gonna vote for those judges, they're not gonna vote for those law enforcement officials, they're just gonna vote you know, at the presidential race. I know y'all are at a local and a state level, so, you know, perhaps y'all could, you know, facilitate some of that knowledge as far as, uh, not a cheat sheet, but just information on each of the candidates and how they uh, affect you at the local level, because regardless to who's president, we could always make that change at the local level. How y'all doing? Um, Michael Wood. I'm an educator in Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Um, I'm at a high school. I've been here for the been here for the last what six years. I've been in high school. Started off at a K-8 center. Went to elementary. Been in high school ever since. My question is is really dealing with education because when I was in high school, we had you know those vocational classes that helped us out for those of us who didn't want to go to college. You know, college wasn't on our mindset. It was taking care of our homes and, you know, learning a different trade, you know. So what can we do to bring vocational and them trades back to school? Because I'm at a, I was at New Orleans for five years. So now I'm at a, a whole nother school, Hialeah Gardens, where that community is very different. You know, I'm an outsider in that community. Those kids, I feel like they don't need me because I'm, I grew up all black school. You know, I, I, I wanted to give back to my people. So at this school, I'm the minority. So I feel like, you know, at that school, they have everything. They have wood shops still. They have the, the auto body. They have a photography. They have these things that they, they literally have more things at a higher rate. And it's not that art that we can't do it. It's just it's not being funneled in our schools, in our community. Coming from New Orleans to this school, whole new world, whole new atmosphere, whole new responsibilities, whole new everything. So what can we do in order to help our youth out and, and bring those type of resources to our community? Because my kids who I still keep in contact with, they need it. Like, and I hate to say it, we need it. So. Hey, we hate to be the dead horse. 
But man, look, I'm born and raised here in the state of Florida. And since I've been an adult, man, uh, we as Democrats have not, we, we've not had a Democratic governor since Lawton Childs. That stuff matters, man. It all goes back to that. When, this man, when he talks about the judges um, on the, in the Florida Supreme Court, they're appointed by whoever the governor is at, at that time with, with, when there's a vacancy. Um, when you talk about why we're not getting the things in our schools that we want to see, that's because, man, we haven't been in control. And we can change that stuff, you know? And we're going to always, man, we, we're, we are so good at identifying the issues and being mad and protesting and hashtagging and boycotting. But when it comes to voting, it's like pulling teeth from a baby, bro. And, and that's, that's, that's just, that's the realization of it, like, you know, from what I feel. So uh, things could be better for us if we participated and encouraged other people. I'm sure everybody in here, we participate. We took the time to come here today. But if we really encourage other people and try to explain it and, 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 and give the correlation as to why it's so important. How many men lost their jobs during this COVID-19 pandemic? If they did lose a job, how, many, how hard was it for, uh, for them to get unemployment from the state of Florida? The $275 a week, one of the lowest in the country, you know, for 13 weeks. But it goes on, and that can change if you have a legislature that understands you, if you have a governor that won't veto the things that Senator Bracey and I can possibly push through the legislature. He still has to sign that stuff in the law. But if we get people, I mean, we're so close. I said earlier, we're, we're losing these statewide races by less than 1%. And that's why they're trying to make it so hard. But we just don't see, we don't understand why. And the power that we do have if all of us just galvanized together and, and, and participated. So, um, You know what? I think that when you look at how the state has created this grading system for uh, how kids do academically, they get like an a, a school, B school, and then that's how they determine the funding. And I think it's really been a plot to take money from the schools that need it the most, you know what I mean? Um, and so, plot may be a little bit strong, I'm not conspiracy theorist, but, but thank you. <laughs> Senator Bullard, Bullard said, it's a plot. So, so I mean, that's, and, but as it goes back to the leadership that's in the state house, going up to the very top of governor, you know, it came down to 20,000 votes, you know, and, and, the, and the differences between the two perspectives were so, were so vast. So I think, those are the problems. We're highlighting the problems. I believe also in like having a strong vocational uh, system so that people who aren't going to college can still get a trade and make a lot of money. A lot of people, I think, why aren't these vocational programs in the schools? Like they should be marketed to students so that they know about it. Right? Electricians, like, 